why do we do anything rather than nothing? Part of it is, you know, because we are curious. Um, so I think we are very curious. I think we are born curious. I mean, this is an innate ability. I, I think that both artists and scientists are curious about the world, uh, but while scientists uh, try to explain things and to predict uh, new phenomena and so on, um, artists uh, try to give us more an impression of the world. To me, they somehow complement each other. You know, there have been relatively few people who were able to be very competent in both the sciences and the art. Leonardo, who is of course better known for his art, was just as curious as anybody I have ever known. I mean, you know, he described phenomena which had nothing to do with his arts at some level. There is no question if you look throughout the history, you see that humans were always more curious than what was simply needed to survive. You know, the fact that, you know, we're interested in quantum mechanics, it's not something that helps me immediately in the supermarket, even though some of the devices that I today now use, you know, are such that could not have been developed without quantum mechanics. You know, when I take my cell phone, uh, not only is there a lot of t technology involved there, but you see, the cell phone also has a GPS system, right? Everybody has now a GPS system in their phone, in their car, in their, in their this. That GPS system uses both Einstein's theory of special relativity and Einstein's theory of general relativity. Now, you might have thought, what do I have with Einstein's theory of relativity? Well, guess what? Your GPS system uses that. So here is a, an image which also affects you in the same way as a work of art affects you. Hubble images are very, very interesting in that respect because Hubble images uh, have, first of all, they've done many things. I mean, f from a scientific perspective, they told us a lot about our universe. Some of the Hubble images are just so mind-boggling that they literally look almost like works of art. They are even richer than works of art in the sense that not only that they are so striking visually, but those are things that actually exist in the universe. Um, and, and people really react very strongly to this as an emotional uh, response there is to this. And we have by now done a few Hubble exhibits, exhibits of Hubble images in art museums. So when, when I see a an image like the Eagle Nebula or, or, you know, or one of these planetary nebulae, my first reaction to this is just like anybody else's. Ah, oh, this is just unbelievably beautiful and so on. But then I add to this and say, okay, so how can you form this structure that has these incredible symmetries and so on? What is it that leaves these columns behind? And then I understand that there is this Star, there are these stars here that shine this intense radiation down here uh, that erodes away all the less dense dust and leaves behind only the densest columns pointing towards those stars and so on. So it doesn't take anything away from my, my reaction. I'm still most impressed by something like the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, which is the deepest image in visible light and near infrared ever taken where you see in one image, you see about 10,000 galaxies. Every point of light in that image is an entire galaxy with 100 billion stars like the sun. And when I know that that entire image is the area that you would see if you look through a drinking straw. So that, you know, really leaves me in awe, even though maybe from a visual perspective, that image is a little bit less impressive because it's, you know, many points of light, you know, and so on, than that. But even that, once I tell people what that is, then all say, wow, you know, and so on. And, 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 and they are very, very impressed. Copernicus suggested that we are not the center of the solar system. Humans discovered that. And then, you know, Shapley say that we're not at the center of the Milky Way galaxies. Well. He discovered that. 
And then Edwin Hubble discovered all these other galaxies. And now the Hubble Space Telescope discovered all these other ga galaxies. So in some sense, this expansion, if you like, of our universe is really the expansion of human knowledge. So humans are central to all of this in that sense. This is all part of what we were able to produce with the human mind. So uh, an understanding of the universe and at the same time uh, this um, emotional response to the universe. What we somehow need to infuse in students through you know, elementary school, high school, you know, and so on, is this type of understanding, you know, this understanding that these are parts of what we humans know and what we should know, and also make them understand that science is not something obscure that just some strange people are dealing with. Not everybody needs to be a scientist, uh, but everybody needs to be able to appreciate science in the same way that everybody appreciates a work of literature, a work of art, you know, and so on, because that is part of human culture. So that's what the kind of education I would like to have, where people are aware of science and of mathematics, you know, and so on, are made aware and are appreciative of it.